Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from our space. I think my wife is cheating on me. I, 34 male, think my wife, 32, might be cheating on me. We have been married for two years, but we have been together for about five years. It has been a tough couple of months for us financially, and I have had to take on more shifts at work to make ends meet. I don't spend as much time with my wife as I used to, but something tells me that she might be cheating on me. For starters, she somehow found a way to completely change her style of dressing, and she pays extra attention to the way she looks to the extent that she feels insecure if she does not look nice when she is going out for anything, including mundane tasks like grocery shopping. We are both low maintenance people, so it's a bit suspicious that she is insistent on trying to look good. I asked my friends and they said it might just be due to the fact that she just went through surgery and trying to look good to aid her healing process. The surgery was because they found a tumor in her breast and she had to take it out, so it wouldn't spread. Our insurance only covered part of the payment for the surgery and not for all the aftercare costs, which was also very expensive. And because she is on sick leave, which is unpaid, we are now both dependent on my salary. That was why I took on more shifts. But she has now gone back to work, so I reduced the number of shifts I was having so I could spend more time with her. She avoids spending time with me. I don't know why, but every time I step into a room where she is, she finds an excuse to step out of the room. She now sleeps on the couch because my snoring disturbs her sleep. I admit that I snore pretty heavily, but it's not something that has ever caused us trouble. When we started dating, she used to want to be with me all the time, and she would text me throughout the day, telling me about everything she was doing. We both didn't exactly have much of a social life, so I tried to include her into everything I was doing. When we first moved in together, we would tell each other everything that had happened while the other person wasn't around. I liked it as a routine because it meant that I knew pretty much everything that was going on with her. She also couldn't keep her hands to herself. She liked touching me and kissing me. She couldn't go an hour whenever we were together without leaning in for a kiss. I wasn't a really physical person, but I found that trait very amusing. However, for about two months now, she has stopped doing all those things. She doesn't even become excited whenever I get home anymore. At times, I feel like she doesn't recognize that I'm even there. I thought it was the side effects from the surgery and being cooped up at home, but things didn't change when she returned to work. She now comes late from work often. Before, she always liked to come home first if she knew she was going to hang out with her coworkers or attend a meeting. She doesn't even bother to notify me if she's going to be back late. I started getting suspicious when she told me she was going to hang out with some of her coworkers after work. I was surprised because she had just told me out of the blue. I thought maybe she was finally getting back to normal, but it became really late and she didn't come home, so I got worried. I sent her another text, but it went unanswered. I tried calling her, but her number went to voicemail. I wasn't comfortable just sitting around and waiting for her to return. I called some of her other coworkers that I knew, and they told me that they left the bar sometime earlier. My wife should have gotten home before all of them. I decided to go down to the bar where they met. I drove down there and found her car in the parking lot. I thought she must have decided to take some more drinks and lost track of time, but when I entered the bar, there was no trace of my wife anywhere. I grew more worried, thinking something bad had happened to her. I went back to the car, which I parked next to hers, and started trying her phone again. It rang, but there was no response, and it eventually went to voicemail. I texted her friends and sister to see if they had heard from her in the past few hours, and they all replied negatively. I was about to give in and call the police when I saw a car drive into the parking lot. It was a sleek car, so it looked a bit out of place in the parking lot. It caught my attention and I looked up to see a woman coming out of the car. It was my wife. She was giggling at whatever the man was saying, so she didn't notice her car right away. When she noticed the car, she was startled to see me there, so I knew it was because of guilt. I had gone crazy trying to look for her and had even gone to the extent of contacting her family and friends, who were also as worried as I was and it just turned out that she had gone out with some guy. I was really pissed at her. I didn't want to start a fight, so I told her that I was going away. I tend to have violent outbursts and I didn't want to end up regretting anything, so I drove off to my brother's. I was plagued with doubts all through the weekend and spent a lot of time watching the house through the security cameras. But she didn't leave the house and she didn't get any visits from anyone except the mailman. If she was cheating, she should have taken advantage of my absence to go out or have her man come over, right? She didn't, so maybe she was innocent. However, I knew that wasn't enough to assure me of her innocence. Maybe she didn't know when I was going to be back and she didn't want me to catch her in the act. Or maybe her lover was out of town. Those are the thoughts that ran through my head. The next day, I returned home after I knew she had left for work before changing into my work gear. When I got back from work, she was home. She even made dinner for us, something that she had stopped doing for a while. I ate the food and afterwards told her that we needed to talk. I asked her to explain what happened on Friday because I had been worried sick. 
She apologized and told me she had decided to stay for some more drinks and she had accidentally put her phone on silent. I didn't believe her because I had checked the bar and she wasn't there. It was then that she broke down crying that she had been feeling down and had run into an old friend. When her co-workers had left, she went on a long drive with the guy and they had just talked. She admitted to being slightly drunk so the friend hadn't wanted to let her drive and she had let him drive her around until she became slightly sober. I accepted her explanation then. But the more I thought about it, the more I wasn't convinced. She didn't even seem remotely drunk when I saw her. And I knew that she had to have been drinking a lot for her to have gotten tipsy. So when I got home the next day, I asked her how many drinks she had taken for her to have gotten drunk. She said she didn't remember. I decided that I wasn't going to let her make me feel bad, so I asked her outrightly if she was cheating on me. She denied it vehemently, and she said she could never cheat on me. I believed her. I decided to let things be. But the thing is that she hasn't changed at all since then. She still returns home late in the evening without telling me where she has gone to. She goes out a lot more without telling me where she is going if she can avoid it. We haven't been intimate in weeks, and anytime I try to initiate intimacy, she avoids me. We used to have sex on a regular basis, and now she won't even let me kiss her. I think I'm going to ask her to try couples therapy. What do you guys think? Is she cheating on me? Update. When I asked everyone if they thought my wife was cheating on me, they asked me to just watch her behavior before jumping to conclusions. So the first thing that came to my mind was to hire a private investigator. I got one with the recommendation of my friends. It was pretty expensive, but I hoped it would be worth it. So the guy will watch her over the next two weeks to see if she does anything suspicious. Update 2. So the PI has been following her around for the past week and has been giving me reports. However, she never leaves work, and when she does go out with her coworkers, she comes home right after. The only strange thing is that she always leaves only after all her coworkers are. She orders a lot of drinks, almost enough to get her drunk. Then she takes a long bathroom break. After the bathroom break, she pays for the drinks and leaves. I don't think she is cheating on me anymore. I'm going to ask the private investigator to stop because there's no way I can afford the fees. Then I'm going to make her attend couple therapy with me. Hopefully, we can salvage our relationship. Update 3. I was so wrong about my wife. I am angry and sad right now. She was actually cheating on me and tried to be smart about it. After I discharged the private investigator from following her, I told her that we should give therapy a trial. She was reluctant at first, but after I poured my heart out to her, telling her how I didn't trust her because of everything she was doing to keep me away and how I loved her enough not to let her push me away, she agreed to therapy and we started working out our issues. She accused me of not catering to her needs the way I used to before she had surgery. I apologized and worked hard to fix the flaw. I wanted to make her so happy that she wouldn't feel the need to draw away from me. It seemed like things were working out for us because of the therapy. We were spending more time together, having sex and going on dates. At this point, I got a price increase at work so I could afford to skip certain shifts. Then one morning, while I was peeing, she came into the bathroom to get ready for work. She goes everywhere with her phone and on this day, she was with her phone. She got a notification on her phone and instead of checking it like she normally would, she swiped the pop-up bar away. The whole thing was looking suspicious and I didn't want to trigger a fight, so I pretended like I didn't notice anything. I spent the whole day thinking of what to do to her to get my hands on the phone. That night, while we got ready for bed, I asked her to make me a smoothie, since she was going to the kitchen anyway. In her haste, she left her phone. I was going to let it be, but I was too curious, so I ended up taking the phone. I scrolled through her text, but I didn't find anything suspicious. I checked her other apps and got something on her Instagram. She uses Instagram a lot, and I checked her DMs. It was there that I found the explicit pictures that she had been sending to some guy online. The guy was telling her that he wanted to screw her so hard and some other stuff. She sent replies on how she wanted his dick all to herself and how much she loved him. They had done so many stuff together, stuff she had told me that she could never try out in bed. She had even expressed how she wanted to suck him off whenever she could. She had to be in a good mood to offer to do that for me. She always complained about my size, about how I was too big for her to handle, and when I saw the pictures the guy sent, he was about my size, but longer. I was heartbroken when I saw everything. We hadn't even finished paying off the debts from her surgery, and she was having sex with another man. There was nothing that she wanted that I didn't do for her. I gave up a major opportunity to stay in the town we were living in so that she could stay in the same town her parents were living in. From the messages, it was evident that the guy was her coworker because they both made references to their workplace. And he didn't know that she was married because he kept calling her by affectionate names, but never once made mention that she leaves me for him. There was no trace that he knew I existed. I checked her other social media apps and found out that it was the same guy all through. 
They have been having sex since six weeks after her surgery. She had never allowed him to come into our house, but she went over to his place a lot. That was where she went to on the night I had gotten worried about her and the bathroom breaks. Were them trying outside sex. They had even taken it up a notch by having sex in a park outside. My wife thought she was being smart. She told the guy she didn't want anyone at work to know so they wouldn't look at them differently. But I knew it was because they all knew that she was married to me. I felt pity for the guy and for the first time since I knew my wife, I hated her so much. And then I thought that the problem was with me and I had been trying to fix things not knowing that I was innocent. There was no way I was going to let her play me for a fool. After I was done with her phone, I dropped it back where she had kept it and went to the bathroom to take a shower. She eventually returned with my smoothie, but I told her that I didn't want it anymore. While we slept, she clung to me in her sleep. Before, I would have been ecstatic that she did that, but now it just felt like clawing her skin off of my body and washing the parts of me that she had touched with sandpaper. When I couldn't bear it any longer, I left her sleeping there and went to sleep on the couch. Then I remembered all the times that she had left the room to sleep on the couch and I couldn't sleep there either. I spent the rest of the night on the bare floor staring at nothing. I left the house as soon as it was done. I bought a new couch and threw the other one out. That was where I started sleeping. She asked me if everything was fine and I told her yeah. I gave the excuse that I got back from work late and I didn't want to disturb her sleep. She didn't say anything. She texted me at work to tell me that she would be home late and I told her that it was fine. I knew she was going to screw her affair partner and it broke my heart all over again because she had been lying to me over and over again. I decided to divorce her, but divorce wouldn't have been enough for me. I needed to make her pay for her deceit and her cheating. After a little research, I found out the reason why she had gone for the coworker. It turns out that the affair partner is the heir to a majority of the shares of the company she worked for. She simply wanted him for his money, nothing more and nothing less. Her birthday was fast approaching, and I remembered they had promised to meet in her office for her gift, which I was pretty sure was just sex. It gave me an idea to punish her, and the best part was, that I wasn't even going to be there. I went to my in-laws and convinced them to help me plan a surprise birthday for her at work. The plan was to visit her during her break, drop off food and cake and return without disrupting the workplace. Her office was pretty chill about stuff like that as long as they didn't disturb the other people. The key word was disruption and I planned to use it against her. Her parents conceded to my plan and everything was set. On her birthday, I didn't wish her a happy birthday. She thought I was planning something. She was right, but it wasn't what she was thinking about. When it was noon, I called my father-in-law and told him that I wouldn't be able to make it to the party because something came up at my workplace. I told him that they should go ahead with the plan. She was definitely going to be in the office. I told them to go straight down to the warehouse because she had told me that she would be filing inventory. They were in for a surprise. I wasn't there, but the news spread around town so quickly that I heard every detail. Her parents and sister had gotten to the warehouse and had found her completely naked while jumping on another man's dick. I heard that her mother had slapped her while she was still naked and had started reprimanding her right there on the spot. The guy was still partially dressed and he ran away while trying to get dressed. Her sister and father left the scene while she was still naked. I heard it caused a lot of commotion in the workplace that night. When she got home, I was waiting. She said she had something to confess, that she had been cheating on me for a while and that she was sorry. She told me that it was because she had gotten bored while waiting to get surgery and that was how she had found herself talking to the guy. I told her that I knew all about it. She was surprised. She begged and pleaded that she never meant things to go that far and I told her that I believed her. When I wiped her tears away, she kissed me and I responded. She initiated sex and I let her because it was meant to be the last time. We tried out everything I had wanted to try out before and she was more than eager to do things. I found it a bit difficult to stay hard because I knew that she had taken another man just hours before me, but I needed to have her believe that things were good. Afterwards, she slept off and I decided to finish the project I had been working on, which was packing everything that belonged to her out of my house. I drove down to her parents' house and dumped everything there before returning back home. I placed the divorce papers on the kitchen table along with a note that I didn't expect her to still be around when I got back in the evening. That was the best way to seek revenge on her. Update 4 She's been trying to reach me since then, but I got a restraining order against her. Her sister told me that she had been suspended from her workplace for having sex in the warehouse. The affair partner got away scot-free because of his position, but I heard now that he also doesn't want to have anything to do with her. I can't wait for the divorce to be finalized and then I can finally cut her out of my life.